if we ever got here. There we go. Let me make sure. I, I think I'm live. Hey, everybody. How's it going? This is Dr. West with West Instructional Services. And uh, I'm excited about uh, tomorrow. I've had the opportunity to work with, hey, Jennifer, had the opportunity to work with so many students, um, getting them ready for the ACT. The ACT will be this um, Saturday. I've had the pleasure of working with some eighth graders, ninth graders, um, 10th, 12th graders, worked with a few nursing students, and um, I'm just excited. I think they learned a lot, and um, we were just going to give a few shout outs to uh, a few schools, uh, a few students that came to hang out with me in my office, and uh, I believe they learned a lot. I think they are ready to roll. So um, here's Jerrica. It's my assistant, Jerrica, and she's going to name off a few of the high school students, not the high school students, but um, a few of the schools that came out to um, be with us. Go ahead, Jerrica. Give a shout out to those schools. Sarah Land High School, Murphy High School, Davidson High School, MGM, LaFleur, Fairhope High and Middle School, Satsuma High School, South Gwinnett High School, Safe Haven Christian Academy, Bryant High School, Baker High School, Bishop State Community College, Gaucher High School. And where is Gaucher? In Georgia. Go Gaucher, Mississippi. Gaucher, Mississippi. No, 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 no. And, and, and let's back up because we had students traveling all over. Now, I'm in Mobile, Alabama. So we had a few students even come from the great state of Georgia. We had a student come from South Gwinnett High School uh, in Georgia. So, and where else? Uh, Lamp High School in Montgomery, Alabama, Williamson Williamson High School, Blunt High School, and Monroe, Monroe County Monroe High School. Monroe County High School. Cool, cool. Okay, so um, the title of this live is ACT Math, and we are going to work a few problems. Just want to show you some of our ACT gear. Got a Let's few shirts on deck. Test prep, act up, ACT up with Dr. West. And we, we have shirt another shirt. Two. And if you would like a shirt, just let me know, inbox me, and I can get one to you. Okay, so let me get it back on me. All right, so if you know someone that is taking the ACT um, tomorrow and math is a little struggle for them, you should tag them in this video so they can get a little practice um, and we'll be ready to roll. So just take a few minutes to invite someone, uh, especially a high school student who is going to um, take their test, their ACT tomorrow, so they can take a look at this video and uh, practice a few problems with us, okay? So go ahead and do that for me while I get my paper and my pens together and tag a few of your friends, tag a few of those high school students. And like I said, I even had an eighth grader um hanging out with us that um you know he's going to be taking act so i'm pretty excited about that all right so let's take a look at what we're getting ready to do and please 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 make sure you tag a high school student uh, or anyone that you know who will be taking the act even if they're going to be taking it later um this will definitely help them all right so let me get the camera we're here in my office and so we're going to take a look at the act book all right so here is a math problem and number one says shannon walked one and two thirds miles on wednesday and two and three fifths miles on thursday 
What was the total distance in miles Shannon walked during those two days? Okay, so let me be honest with you. A lot of students are really, really intimidated when it comes to fractions, yeah? And I know even some adults are intimidated when it comes to fractions, okay? So the best thing to do with this is, if I write this over, all right, so obviously I'm adding, right? Because we're talking about how many miles she um, walked in these two days, okay? So the best thing to do with this is to convert your fractions to improper fractions, okay? That means I'll say three times one plus two. So what's three times one? Three mm -hmm. plus two five. is five. Okay, so now I've got a new fraction. Now I've got five thirds, okay? I've got rid of that whole number. All right, so now I'm going to say five times two, which is 10, ten plus three, 13. 13. So now I'm at 13 over five. Okay, so my common denominator is going to be 15, all right? So 15 divided by three is five. Five times five is 25. 25. 15 divided by five is Three. So 13 times 3 is 39. 39. All right. So we're halfway done. So now I'll just do 25 plus 39. 64. 64. 64 over 15. Now I have 64 over 15. However, the answer choices are in mixed value. Correct? So. I would do, I could easily do 64 divided by 15, which is what? A whole number of 4.26. Okay, it's gonna be 4.26. All right, so process of elimination. I know it's not this one. I know it's not this one. I know it's not that one. It's going to be between this one and this one, okay? So my answer is actually going to be C, four and four fifteenths, okay? All right, so let's look at number two. Number two says four X cubed times three X Y to the second power times two X Y squared is equivalent to what? Basically, they just want you to solve this, right? They just want you to solve the problem. Uh, what's my function? Well, I'm multiplying, correct? Now, what is the rule? Because these are exponents. What's your rule when you are multiplying with exponents? Well, when I'm multiplying with exponents, I add the exponents, correct? So I know I'm gonna be adding the exponents. All right, so my whole numbers are four, three, and two. So what's four times three? Four times three is 12. What's 12 times two? Okay, so I already know I'm gonna have 24 there, right? So obviously I can get rid of this. I can get rid of this. All right, so now let's deal with the exponents. I've got an X. I've got X cubed, X, and then another X. So what is three? This is understood as a one, and this is understood as a one. So it's what? Three plus one plus one. So that's X to the fifth, right? And then I've got some Y's. Here's my Y. I've got two here, and I've got two here. So what's two plus two? It's four, right? So, my answer is J. Now, on the ACT, of course, you're being timed. On the math section, you want to work smarter, not harder. So, if I take a look at number three, number three is really, really long. So, what I would do, I'm going to come back to that one, okay? Because i got a lot of reading to do. Now... Hey, Victoria, are you working on this with me? Good. Get your pen and, and paper out. 
So four, four has a lot of reading also. So I'm going to do what? I'm gonna skip that and come back. Remember, you want to work smarter and not harder. All right, same thing. If I go here, look at how long number five is. I've got to do a ton of reading on five. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come back to that one, okay? So here's six, I'm gonna do six. Six says a rectangular lot that measures 125 feet by 185 feet is completely fenced in. Now guess what? Keyword here is fencing. That's a direct indication that this problem is getting ready to deal with perimeter, okay? That's the perimeter word. Anytime they're dealing with fencing, edges, border, that's dealing with perimeter. And I know perimeter deals with addition. Okay, so I'm visual. I have to draw stuff. So that's a rectangle. Excuse my drawing. It's not perfect. It's not Picasso, but that's okay. All right, so one side is 125. The other side is 185. Now, what do we know about rectangles? Well, here's the question. What is the length in feet of the fence? So they said this entire thing, rectangular lot is going to be fenced in, correct? What do we know about rectangles? Well, I know if this is 185, that's also 185, right? I know if this is 125, this is also 125, correct? So basically, I'm just adding. Do they have problems that's simple on ACT? Yes, they do. They really do. And sometimes students miss it because they overthink it. So 125 plus 125 is what? It's 250. That's 250. And then 185 plus 185 is what? 370. That's 370. So what I do now? I just add them together. Mm -hmm. And my answer is? 620. 620. Easy. Right? All right. Let's look at seven. Seven. I can do seven. It looks weird, but that's okay. I'm gonna break it down. It says the expression A, then it's got the bracket, B minus C plus D, and then the brackets here, okay? But that's fine, I'm not worried about that. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna write my A right here, and then I'm gonna keep my bracket, and then I'm gonna say B minus C plus D, and then I'm going to keep the brackets there. So now, what am I getting ready to do? Well, I'm just going to distribute the A to everything. That's all that means. I'm going to distribute the A to everything. All right? So, A to the B. Keep my minus. A to C. Plus A to D. Guess what? You didn't even need a calculator for that one. So the answer is C, All right? Okay, so let's look at eight. Eight is an easy one. I can work it quickly. Don't really need a calculator for this one either. Um, so this says, 6x minus 3 equals negative 5x plus 7. They want to know what is x, right? So basically, I'm, I need to remember that apples go with apples, oranges go with oranges, right? Don't Do they still teach that like that in school? They don't say that. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. I just made that up. But anyway, combine like terms. Let's just say it like that. Let's use the right terminology. <laughs> Okay, so let's do plus three, plus three. How about that? So that cancels out, right? 
and then seven plus three is 10. And I keep my negative five X, right? Mm -hmm. And I keep my plus sign and I still have six X, right? Okay, so now I'm not finished because I need to get X on the side by itself, right? So let's say plus five X, plus five X, right? That cancels out. So now I'm left with 10. Mm-hmm. And then six plus five is 11. 11 X. So basically, I am just about done, right? Divide both sides by 11. It's 10 over 11, right? So the answer is G. Perfect. Okay? So let's look at number nine. Number nine says, what two numbers should be placed in the blanks below so that the difference between the consecutive numbers is the same? So basically, they want us to figure out what the pattern is. So it's almost like adding the same number over and over again. For example, if, if I say, um, five and then five plus five is 10 then 10 plus five is 15 then 15 plus five is 20. Everything has to be separated uh, by the same amount. So actually this particular problem, I can use what they give me. Okay. I can basically use what they give me. So let's start with a, so what's the difference between 13 and 19? Okay, so the difference between 13 and 19 is six. All right, so that means what would be the next number? So if I say 13, 19, what's 19 plus six? 25. That would be 25. And then what's 25 plus six? 31. 31. So that means this won't work because those that's not giving me my 34. All right? So we won't do that. That won't work. So let's try B. B is giving me 20 and 27. All right. So what's the difference between 13 and 20? Seven. Okay. So watch this. So I got 13. The difference between 13 and 7. I'm sorry. 13 and 20 is 7. So that's 20. And then what would be after that? 27. That'll be 27. That means I'll add another seven. What's 27 plus seven? 34. 34. That means my answer is B. So don't be afraid to use what they give you because sometimes, well, all the time, one answer has to be right. So you might as well use um, what they give you to work it backwards, okay? Okay. 10. If X is a real number such that x cubed equals 729. Okay, so let's let's just wait. Let's get this part first. I know we gotta solve this part, but first let's do this part. So that means some number cubed equals 729. So guess what? Take your calculator and get the cube root so look on your calculator and find that function right there. And what's the cube root of 729? What is it? Nine. It's nine. So basically nine cubed is what this is, is 729. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to substitute these X's for what number? Nine. For nine. So I'm gonna go over here and put nine squared plus what? The square root of nine. So what's nine squared? 81. What's the square root of nine? Three. Three. What's 81 plus three? It's 84. Let's see if they got 84. They do. So the answer is 84. 
okay? All right, so let's go back to number three. Let's go back to number three, okay? Number three, remember, we skipped number three because it was a lot of um, reading. And remember, you want to capitalize on your time. You want to work uh, smarter and not harder, right? Okay, so let's read three. Mr. Wilk is a high school math teacher whose salary is $33,660 for this school year which has 180 days. In Mr. Wilkes' school district, substitute teachers are paid $85 per day. If Mr. Wilk takes a day off without pay and a substitute teacher is paid in his classes, how much less does the school district pay in salary by paying a substitute teacher? Okay, so basically they're saying if Mr. Wilkes misses a day how much less will the will the school district have to pay correct all right so that's pretty simple what we're going to do is his salary is 33,660 so let's take 33,660 right now that's his total salary for a total of 180 days. So what I'm trying to figure out is, I just need to know how much is he getting paid per day. So 33,660 divided by 180 is what? 187. So he's getting 187 per day. So now I just need to see the difference in the pay. He would get 187 the sub would get $85. So basically, I'm just getting the difference between 185 and, and $85. 187 and 85. Oh, that's right. That should be 187. That's my mistake. All right. So, great. So 187 which is his salary per day, minus $85, which is the sub salary equals what? 102. 102, right? So it was a bunch of words, but it really wasn't a whole lot of work <laughs> to get the answer. So don't be intimidated by the words, just come back to it, okay? All right, so look at four. A student has earn the following scores on four 100 point tests this marking period 63 72 88 and 91 those are the four scores right what score must the student earn on the fifth and final 100 point test in order to make an 80 right so this is what kind of question? Average, okay? How do you get an average? Well, you get averages by adding up all numbers and dividing by that many numbers. But we can't really do that right now. The easiest thing to do when you have something like this, you can add up what you already have. I already have 63, so let's do 63 plus 72 plus 88 plus 91, which gives you what? 314. Okay, so I already have 314. Now watch this. I'm going to work real smart. I'm going to add in a number here and then divide by 5 to see which one gives me 80. Okay, so these scores, I already have 314. So let's do 314 plus 79. Let's say that's the fifth score. So what's 314 plus 79? What's that? 393. And divide by 5. 78.6. So that's 78.6. That's not 80. So that's not it. 
All right, so let's do 314. These are my four I already did. So 314 plus 86, what does that give me? 400. So 400 divided by five. 80. So that's the score that I need. I need to make an 86 in order to get a perfect 80. Okay, so make sure you work smarter, not harder. All right. And the last one, this one was a long one. That's why we skipped it. You want to always make sure you save the longer ones for last or any that you feel like would be, um, you know, difficult for you. All right, so this one says the oxygen saturation of a lake is found by dividing the amount of dissolved oxygen the lake water currently has per liter by the dissolved oxygen capacity per liter of the water and then converting the number into a percent. Now, that's a lot of words. That's not even the question. Now, let's get to the question. Here is the question starting here. So, let's start here. If the lake currently has 6.4 milligrams, so this is what it has, and the capacity of oxygen dissolved is 9.5. This is 9.5 is what it can hold, okay? It currently has 6.4, but it can hold 9.5. They want to know what is the oxygen saturation level of the lake to the nearest percent. So basically, what we'll do is we'll take these two numbers. This is what it has. It has 6.4. This is what it will hold, okay? So I'm going to write down that 6.4 is X. X is the percent of 9.5, right? So since the X is over here, I'm basically going to do 9.5, 9.5. So that cancels out. So what is 6.5 divided by 9.5? 0.6736. Okay. Point six seven mm -hmm. So it's going to be 0 0.67. So the answer is B. Okay. All right, so that was 10 math problems. And um, hopefully on test day, you will be very, very successful. Um, see how I wrote all over the paper? You can write all over your paper. It is your paper. It is your test. Um, so make sure you're working smarter, not harder. Make sure you have a calculator. And um, make sure you use your answer choices. Make sure you use those answer choices um, to help you out because um, one of them has to be right, right? One of them has to be Okay, guys, so those were 10 math problems. I hope that helped somebody out. Um, share the video with anyone that you know will be taking the ACT. And um, best wishes to everybody on tomorrow make sure you get a lot of sleep um eat you some breakfast and um like i always tell my students make sure you're not hanging around a crowd of kids don't carpool with your friends you're gonna get distracted um and best wishes to everyone um thanks for hanging out with me and working uh, a few of those act math problems take care everybody